Hey guys, it's Jenny. Welcome back once again to Solid Gold. Now in last week's video, I promised you that this week I would do an updated fish room tour and guess what? That's exactly what we're gonna do. I wanted to show you guys around my fish room because number one, a lot of you have been requesting it non-stop and number two, I have actually changed a lot of things in my fish room. Of course, my fish room is still a work in progress and it's really never gonna be done to my satisfaction but it does look pretty cool right now and I've got a ton of new fish out there. I got a total of about 30 fish right now. Lots of new tanks that I set up out there and even a centralized air pump system with a linear piston air pump that I set up. So I wanna show you guys around. Let's go check it out. Here's what you see when you walk out the door to my balcony. I have my four 40 gallon tanks set up on this rack system that I got from Lowe's. I'll put a link to the rack system down below. It's super handy. It fits a 40 gallon tank exactly. One set comes with enough to set up four 40 gallon tanks just like the way I have it. In the top left one I have three of my baby broadtail moors from Amy Shanka and then underneath that on the bottom left I have Luca, my white butterfly telescope who I've had for over three years now and then I've also got Asha who is about two years old now. I bred him from Minai, a goldfish that I used to have. I have these two segregated from the rest of my adult red and white butterflies just because I'm not not really interested in breeding these two right now so I don't want to keep them with the other ones in case the other ones spawn I want to be able to keep the eggs that they produce instead of worrying that Luca or Asha may have had some part in the spawning activities. On the bottom right hand 40 gallon tank, I have the other four broadtail moors from Amy Shanka. I split them up into two groups so they can have more space to grow better. And then up on the upper right hand 40 gallon tank, I actually have some one week old fry and they're just little guys right now. I was really excited to see that my group of red and white butterflies that I have had for a while, not my new fish but the ones that I already had, have been chasing in the past couple of weeks. So I put in some spawning mops and sure enough the next morning I came out and there were eggs on the spawning mops. They have spawned a total of three times so far in the past week and a half and I have the first batch of fry have hatched out already, they're about a week old and then the second batch will be hatching any day now. They're on one of those spawning mops and then on two of the spawning mops I actually have a new batch of eggs just from this morning. So they've been spawning non-stop. And then of course I have my 127 gallon Laguna tub with my six new red and white butterflies in here. They're all doing really well. This shipment of fish has been one of the best that I've ever gotten as far as fish not having any issues whatsoever after shipping. All these fish were like bulletproof, really solid, healthy fish, even after being shipped. And I think that that's partially due to putting them right into this tub instead of putting them into a glass aquarium with fancy filters on it and everything. Like I said in my last video, my fish always do better in these simple tubs with a sponge filter than they do in an aquarium with fancy sump filters or anything like that. So I'm really happy with these guys, but I haven't seen any spawning behavior yet. I'm hoping that eventually they will start to spawn and I want to mix a few of these in here with my group of other red and white butterflies which you'll see in a little while so that I can get some of those darker reds coming out in the fry that I produce. And then here I have one of my Intex pools. I have two of these. They're actually just little kitty pools made by Intex. They hold about 100 gallons. These kiddie pools are obviously not made for holding fish. They're made for little kids to wade and swim in. But the cool thing is they're pretty cheap. I think they were somewhere between 40 and $60 for one pool. So for the gallonage that you get for that price, that's a really, really good deal. They're also really easy to set up. It didn't take long at all. I didn't really even need to follow the instructions. It was pretty intuitive. And the dimensions are really great for holding fish as well because it's a shallow tub, so it's good for goldfish because they don't spend a whole lot of time near the surface of the water anyways. They kind of like to be near the bottom, so they don't need a tall tank. And it's also got a really large surface area, so it allows for a lot of good oxygen and CO2 exchange at the surface of the water. I really like them for holding fish. 
The one thing about them that I will say is they made the bottom liner a little bit thinner than the liner on the sides and it doesn't really make sense to me. I'm not really sure why they would do that. You would think that you'd want the bottom to be at least as thick as the sides because if there's any unevenness or like sharp pokey objects underneath this tank, if the bottom layer is too thin it can poke through because of all the water pressure on top of it. Something I did just to make sure that doesn't happen is I of course swept and vacuumed underneath the area where these tubs were going to go before I set them up to make sure there was no pebbles or sharp rocks or sticks or anything like that underneath them that could poke the liner from the bottom. And then I also put down some black poly liner underneath where these tubs are just for that extra protection in case there is any unevenness on the wood floor sticking up and poking the tubs. I can help relieve some of that a little bit with that extra liner. If you guys want to try out one of these Intex pools for your own fish, I think you can still buy them on Amazon or maybe eBay. And if I can find a link online, I will put that in the description below for you guys to check out. I also have two sponge filters running on each of these pools. I've got my six Calico Butterfly telescopes in here and one Kieran Longtail telescope. Three of these fish are from my brand new shipment that I just got a couple weeks ago and then three of the butterflies and the one long tail telescope are from the shipment that I got a month and a half or so ago from Dandy Aranda's. I've noticed since putting the butterflies out here instead of inside in my aquarium that the blacks on them have gotten so much blacker. It's crazy, like some of these fish are really dark now and in the aquarium they didn't look that dark. So it's kind of cool. They actually look a lot prettier that way and I even think that the reds are starting to come out a little bit more as well. And then over here in the other Intex pool, I have my group of red and white butterflies that I've had for a while. I have in here four babies that I bred that are a little over a year old now. Actually, they're close to a year and a half now. And then I have Sophie and Clyde, of course. Sophie's my big mama. She's my big girl. Sophie has really taken off in growth. She's not a very good swimmer anymore. She kind of just hovers near the bottom and doesn't move much but she is a massive fish. She is hands down the biggest goldfish that I've ever had. Some of you mentioned in my previous video that Navi, one of my new fish, was really big, but no, <laughs> Navi is small compared to Sophie. Sophie's a monster. Clyde's pretty big too. He's getting up there in size and he's a little fatty. He's always been a little fatty. That's what I love about him so much. I set this Intex pool up about two, one and a half weeks ago, and as soon as I put all six of them in here together, that's when the chasing started, and then the next day they spawned. So this has proven to be, at least for my fish, a really good environment to get them wanting to chase and start spawning. You can see that I've also got a couple of spawning mops in here because they just spawned this morning, and I pulled out two that were in there and left two because these two didn't have eggs on them, the other ones did. I'm just gonna leave these spawning mops in here because I'm hoping that they're gonna continue spawning for a little bit here and I can just keep pulling eggs out of there. My four babies that are in here, I'm really proud of. I think that they're growing super well. So that's it for all the tanks that I have in the outdoor area. All told, I have about 480 gallons of water out here and about 25 to 30 fish. So obviously with that many tanks, I need a good way to filter all of them. And I recently took off all of my hang on back filters and I went over to the linear piston air pump to use air driven sponge filters for all the filtration on all the tanks. This way saves a lot of money in the energy bill and it's also just way more efficient, easy to use, easy to clean. There's no taking apart hoses and tubes to clean the filters out. It's just a matter of squishing out the sponge filters every week or so to make sure there's no debris in them. I have my linear piston air pump up on a shelf that I put up in the corner and then there's a closed circuit of PVC going around the entire upper perimeter of the room and then in the PVC I have holes drilled at intervals where the tanks are placed. For the bigger tanks I drilled three holes per tank. I wanted two sponge filters and one air stone in each one of the bigger tanks. The four 30 gallon breeders each just have one hole drilled for them because they just have a single sponge filter. I got the linear piston air pump from Gemco and I definitely recommend them. They're really nice to work with. If you have any questions about how to set up your fish room, they'll tell you exactly what products you need and how to set them up. I got this air pump a year or two ago now and I just haven't used it 
until now because I ended up moving and not having a big fish room for a while but now I do so I can finally use it and I love it it's completely silent the only noise that you can hear in the fish room out here does not come from the air pump but it actually comes from the bubbles that the air stones and the filters are making and I want to refer you guys to a super helpful video that Ted Judy has on how to set up air in your fish room it's what I used to learn all of this and it's an awesome resource so I'm gonna link that video for you guys down below as well in my office inside I have my 75 gallon aquarium this tank has a sump underneath and I usually don't run an air stone in this tank but the bottom tends to collect a lot of debris and having an air stone inside the main tank itself helps to lift it up to the surface where it can be sucked into the sump and then filtered out so lately I have been using an air stone I have my four black butterfly telescopes in here three of them are from Dandy Aranda's and one I bred myself about a year and a half ago these guys are doing great and I'm just excited for them to start breeding as well Thanks for watching another solid gold video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to leave a thumbs up on this video and share it on Facebook with your friends. Don't forget to also click on these videos that you see over here. These are past videos that I have done and they're pretty darn cool, so I want you to check them out. Also, I am still selling my 2016 solid gold calendars. These are calendars with beautiful photographs of all my goldfish, so check that out in the link down below. I'll see you guys again in next week's video, and until then, you know what to do. Stay gold. This video was made possible through the generous support of viewers like you. To find out more, go to patreon.com slash solidgoldfish.